Welcome to the Life United Podcast. We are all about helping you know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. We know that today's message is going to be a blessing to you. We just started a series this past week called Entangled. And uh, John shared a great word uh, last week. And I'm going to read this scripture to you in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. The New Living Translation says, Soldiers don't get tied up in the affairs of civilian life, for then they cannot please the officer who enlisted them. If you're not tangled, the, the King James says entangled. If you're not careful, you can get caught up in things in your life you have no business being involved with. Because they're not going to be, uh, they're going to cause you uh, problems. You're going to get tangled up. You're going to get tied up in them. And if you're not careful, you can really miss the fullness of what God has for your life by getting caught up in those things. I, I mentioned earlier that I, I, that I uh, hunted with Stanley, and I just recently went on a hunt in, um, up in Kansas. And... Uh, I had this stand that was really a good stand, but you had to walk around the world to get through the gate to get to it. And it was the right thing to do, but I didn't want to go around. And they had a, now some of you are not going to understand this at all, but it was a five strand barbed wire fence. And I figured out, you know, if I can just, pry that thing open just enough, I can get through that barbed wire fence and that'll save me about 10 minutes, 15 minutes walking to get in there. So I did. I got over there and I, and I actually figured out a way to tie up the top and tie up the bottom where I could crawl through. And I got about halfway through and my britches caught on the backside. I couldn't go in and I couldn't go out. And the more I tried to get in or to get out, the more entangled I got in that barbed wire. And I'm going to tell you something. It took me uh, almost an hour to get out of that barbed wire fence. Do you know that Christians do that all the time? They, they don't want to go through the gate. They want to take a shortcut and find an easier way to do something. And the next thing you know, they're tangled up. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about today. But, but if you're not careful... You can, get that, you can get in that place where you can get caught up and tangled up in something and not be effective at all for the kingdom of God and for what God has, has, uh, wants for you when all you have to do is just go through the gate. All you have to do is do it the right way, do the right thing, and when you do the right thing, everything's fine. But it's when you try to take shortcuts and you try to climb through the fence that you get entangled. And I'm going to talk to you about that for a, a little bit this morning. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 10, I'm going to read this to you. Paul is praying a prayer for the Philippians. And listen to what he says. He says that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense until the day of Christ. Now, that may sound a little bit strange to you, the way he prayed that, he said that, but let me read you a couple of translations that'll help you. That you may approve whatever meets the standard of God's Word. Another one says, have a sense of what's vital or important. Another one says this, that uh, you'll be able to recognize without effort and to prefer instinctively the things that are really good. The Amplified Bible says this, so that you may surely learn to sense what is vital, recognize the highest and the best, and distinguishing the moral differences, that you may be untainted and pure and unerring and blameless so that with hearts sincere and certain and unsullied, you may approach the day of Christ, not stumbling or causing others to stumble. Now, Paul is praying a real simple prayer here. It may sound a little bit 
deep, if you want to call it that. But here's what Paul was praying. I'm going to pray that you understand what's really important in life and how you are supposed to really live your life and that you're able to see that and perceive that and do that so that you won't stumble and get entangled. And see, that's where we ought to live our lives as Christians. We, we need to realize and understand uh, that God wants us to stretch uh, ourselves out beyond our day-to-day life and have a sense of what's really important. Let me give you an example of this, because we can get bogged down in self-centeredness. Listen, right now, the culture of this nation is, 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 is so self-centered. People, if they don't like something, they want to get rid of you. They want to cancel you. They want to blot you out. Nobody, you know, you can't just uh, uh, be agreeable and disagree anymore. It's a, it's a war. Let me tell you something. If you're a Christian, you ain't got any business getting in the middle of that. Well, I voted for Trump or I voted for Biden. Listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying. You better understand what's really important. Okay? Because if you don't, you're going to get trapped. You're going to get entangled And you're going to catch yourself, listen to me, living your life, doing things that in the end aren't going to matter a hill of beans, so to speak. Why waste your time? Paul prayed, listen, you need to see and seek what is important in life and let that be what you focus on. Let me give you an example from the Bible real quick. Jesus came to the house of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. Now, let me tell you, Jesus didn't go anywhere hardly by himself when he was walking on the earth. He had a crowd. And so all this bunch walked into the house. And, you know, most of them were men and, you know, people like Peter, you know, big fishermen, you know, they worked a lot and they had big appetites. And and all of a sudden they come in, Jesus sits down in the living room and starts talking. All of a sudden, Martha says, what am I going to do? I got to feed all these people. And she started thinking about what she's going to do. I got to go kill a lamb or I got to go do this or I got to, you know, put baked potatoes in the microwave, whatever. I got to get something going here, you know, because I got to have to feed all these people. Then she gets mad. Now, wait a minute. She gets mad at Jesus. Jesus, don't you care that my sister won't even help me? Now, listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, Martha, you are cumbered by many things. You are distracted by your serving, but your sister has chosen, your sister has chosen the right thing, the most important thing. See, sometimes we can be so distracted by life that we forget what's really important. We, we forget, you know, what, 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 what can we do for the kingdom of God? Jesus spelled it out for us uh, in, in uh, Matthew chapter 6 in verse 33. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added to you. Wouldn't it have been cool if Martha had walked in there and said, Jesus, here's a loaf of bread. And here's a few fish. I'm going to listen to you. And when I get through, you fix supper. Somewhere you got to start choosing what's important in life. Because I want to tell you something. Listen, Stanley was 97 when he went home to be with the Lord. You said, man, that's a long time to live. Well, it is unless you're 97. All of a sudden, you say, man, life went by in such a flash. It's I mean, I'm 73 years old. I'm thinking, where did it go? That's why the Bible says life is a vapor. You know, what are you, how are you going to live your life? What are you going to do? Are you going to spend your whole life spinning your wheels on things that are not even important? You've got to be able to know what's it valuable. Pat Robertson, who started 700 Club, he's still on there some now, uh, he said this of uh, Dr. Lester Sumrall, who was a uh, uh, close, uh, was very one of my mentors and a friend. 
uh, he said this about him. And when he said it, I, I wrote it down uh, because I was actually having a meal with Pat Robertson when he said this. And I wrote it down because I said, I want to be like that. And this is what he said. He said that Dr. Sumrall always had a sense of knowing what was important. I want to know what's important. I want to know what's of eternal value. How can I affect something that's going to have eternal consequences rather than get involved in a cause that four years from now or eight years from now or some other time period from now, is, it's just going to be history. I don't want to live my life making history on this earth. I want to make my, I want to, uh, make my life something that's going to make history in heaven. So you've got to learn and, and, and let that prayer sink in that you're going to choose something that's important. Because the rest of that verse in Philippians 1.10 says this, that you may be sincere and without offense until Jesus returns. Amen. Sincere. Do you know what that word means? That word means the, the, the essence of the word literally means tested as genuine, judged by sunlight or pure. So what you value is going to determine how you live, how you're judged by sunlight, by what you've done for the kingdom, or what you've done on the earth. You, you've got to make the choice. The good news is this. Listen, over in 1 John 1, 7, uh, John said this. He said, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Now listen to this. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. You know what that means? That means that there are going to be times when you sin and you don't even know it. You know, there are sins of commission, but there are also sins of omission, where you don't do what you know you should have done. Okay? There, you, you, there's no way you could ever get, ask God and get forgiveness enough for everything you've done wrong in your life. Impossible. So what do you do? Well, you walk in the light. You walk in what's valuable. You walk in the things of God, the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. And what does that do? That makes you sincere about how you live your life. But here's the thing. Here's the rub, so to speak. That you may be sincere. Now listen to this next verse, part of this. Without offense. Without Offense. See, here's where you get drawn into the trap. This is where you get into Bob wire. When you let offense get into your life. When you choose something that's not valuable, but is satisfying to yourself maybe, you get caught. The word there, offense, literally means to be tripped up or to stumble the same word that Paul used in Philippians chapter 1, verse 10. You literally, listen, uh, you get caught up, you get trapped. The word actually is talking about a big basket that you put a stick under. And if you were, you know, if you were raised in the country, we used to do this all the time to catch birds. And you put a stick under it and you put a string on it. And you put some something, bread or something in that thing, and you get a bird walk by and you pull that, that stick down, you just trapped. People get, listen, Christians are trapped all the time from doing what's really vital, really important in life because they allow offense to come into their lives. They don't choose to avoid the offense to walk in love toward the offense and they get tangled up. Now, let me tell you, listen, this church is over 40 years old. 
okay? We have probably had 10 congregations go through here. And I would tell you right now as a pastor that probably a third of those left because they got offended. Something offended them. Could be my preaching. I doubt that though. I mean, <laughs> could, could be the chairs. Could be the, we had pews. It could have been a million things. I preached on offense on a Wednesday night one time, many, many years ago. In fact, I ended up writing a book about it, a little book about it on offense. And I used a general illustration about how somebody could get offended. Nobody in mind just kind of made it up. Well, there was a lady sitting over on this side, none of y'all, <laughs> over on this side who thought I was talking about her. In the middle of the service, she gets up, turns around, and she didn't slip out quietly. She stomped out. Got offended preaching about offense. She missed the last part. It would have really helped her. She'd have just hung in there a while. But see, people do that all the time. Some people just do it almost unconsciously. But when you get caught doing that, you, that literally means you're stumbling, you're trapped, and you're not going to be able to do what God really wants you to do. The most valuable, the highest that you could. I'm going to tell you a real quick story. A lot of you know that, that Becky and I uh, were, uh, I, when I got saved and she got back in fellowship with the Lord, we went to Lakewood Church. Now, most of you know Lakewood Church is Joel Osteen. Well, Joel was a teenager when we were there. So I'll tell you how long ago it was. John Osteen was our, was our pastor. The church was not very big. It's not as big as, it wasn't as big as this church. And, and, uh, there was a couple on staff there who had helped, really helped me, okay, a lot uh, in, my, in my growth, in my spiritual growth, because I didn't know anything. I wasn't raised in church. I was raised in bars and nightclubs, you know, you know in, not when I was little, but, you know, I, I just didn't go to church, okay? So, so um, they helped me so much, just guide me through the basics of Christianity. Well, Brother Osteen felt like he, he needed to let them go. So he fired them. Now, I got hot. I'm telling you, I got upset about it. And I said, I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to talk to him. So I took somebody with me. I'm not going to tell you who it is, but he got up here and spoke earlier today. But other than that, I'm not going to tell you who it was. So we, we sat down in that office, little office there with Brother Osteen, and, and I just pled my case. Now, Brother Osteen, this isn't right. You know, the, you know, I just went through, you know, they're good people, I, 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 all this. And he looked at me and he said, Sam, this is none of your business. Just made me madder. I mean, I got hot. I really got upset. So we got up and left. And man, I'm, I'm done with this church. If this is the way Christianity is, I'm done. Now, I, I just want to tell you, he had his own reasons for that. And it really wasn't any of my business, okay? Uh, but I mean, I was upset. And so i never forget, Becky and I went home and we started talking about it. Now, listen to me. This is very important, okay? I had to make a choice. Am I going to get offended because he, because he did this? Or am I going to choose something of more value? What am I getting out of this relationship in this church? What is God doing in my life because of this church? And, and choose that and let this other alone. I had to make that choice. Listen, I'm telling you, I would not be standing here today preaching to you if I'd made the wrong choice. Because let me tell you something about offense. Once you get into it, it just gets bigger and bigger. The next thing you know, you're mad at everybody. People get offended, they get mad at everybody. And, and listen, doesn't mean you're not going to heaven, but I'm going to tell you, when you get there, you're going to have a talk with Jesus about it because Paul said, you need to learn what is important in life, what is valuable in life, 
And, and let that lead you, let that guide you, and don't get caught up, don't get trapped in things that are not important and get offended. We almost lost some of our best friends uh, when we first started in the ministry uh, because she, the, the couple, the, the wife, got offended at me. And she had every right to, now that I look at it, but I didn't mean anything by it, but I had to go use the telephone. Again, this is for a cell phone, so she said, well, you can talk to you know, the phone back in the bedroom. So I went back there, and I was talk, did what I needed to do, and I came out. And I told her, I said, your, your bedroom's a mess. Not a good idea. Don't do that. <laughs> now, I was just joking. You know, only thing, she just, the bed wasn't made. Okay? But, but, uh, after that, she wouldn't even hardly talk to me. I didn't understand. I didn't know what happened. She didn't tell. Um, uh, how are you? Fine. Oh. And I said, all right, what's wrong? Nothing. Well, you know, that's usually a sign that something's wrong. You know, it, usually that's. A, so finally, I said, all right, I am not leaving this house until you tell me what did I do? And she told me that, and I just started laughing. I said, I am so sorry. I was just joking. And I, I, I literally said, please forgive me. I, I, I am so sorry. And you know what she did? And we've had a relationship all these many years later because of that. But the, the point is, it, offense will destroy relationships. Hey, I've, I have to tell you, I mean, I've, I'm... I'm certainly not perfect at this. I've got a friend right now that I don't have a relationship anymore. It's because I got offended at something he did. I ought to know better. Now, this was, you know, 30 years ago, but still, I should have known better. There was something more important. That relationship was more important than me getting offended over something that didn't mean anything. But I let it get to me. And I don't have that relationship anymore. And I should. Don't get trapped. Don't get caught up in things. Listen, people are offended at other people that they used to be friends over politics. Are you kidding me? I, I don't want to be a part of that kind of history. Well, I remember when Biden beat Trump. Or Now, see, somebody's going to get mad at that because you think Trump's still going to win. I don't care whether he... I'm not going to get in the middle of that. That's not my point. My point is, there's more important things to do than get offended over something like, like that. Well, you won't... You, no, you, 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 you're not involved in this cause or this cause. Listen to me. Listen, you, you can get involved in a cause and miss God. Because there are things that are more important. There are things that are more important. Paul said, I want you to know and be able to choose the most important thing, the most valuable thing, and not get caught up in offense. Jesus talked about this in Mark chapter 16. I'm going to just share this real quickly and I'm going to be finished. But listen, Mark chapter 16, he's talking about a parable. And, and in verse 16, he says, these likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who when they hear the word, immediately they receive it with gladness. But they have no root in themselves. So endure for a time. Afterward, when persecution, tribu tribulation, persecution arise for the word's sake, immediately they what? The same word. They get offended. They get trapped. They get trapped. Now listen to me. It's important that you hear this. Okay? Listen to me. Because you have to have your own roots. Uh, it says they, they were, uh, they were, uh, there was offense. They didn't choose what was really important. The word there actually means to be resentful and to have hurt feelings, to be displeased, indignant, and resentful. Those are all part of that trap. And I got my feelings hurt. Well, quit getting your feelings hurt. 
There's more important things than you getting your feelings hurt. Do you know the Bible? Does, now I know, you, you know, this is a church, right? We're going to talk about the Bible. The Bible says to even love your enemies. How are you going to get your feelings hurt if you even have to love your enemies? Well, they didn't treat me right. Love those that despitefully use you. See, what are you choosing? I'm going to get my feelings hurt. Well, you know what you're going to do? You're going to get trapped. You're going to get caught in the barbed wire because you're not going to be able to, to really focus on what God might want to use you in in your life because you're offended. You're resentful. You got your feelings hurt. You're displeased. You got, you're re- over something. Here's the scary part about this, because it says that they were outwardly happy about the Word of God. Well, that's good preaching, Pastor. Well, it is till you walk outside, you know, and somebody challenges what you heard. And it says they had no root in themselves. Let me tell you the scary thing about having roots, okay? A lot of times people, they're, they're, they're not growing out of the soil of the Word of God or, or growing because of the Word of God and, and, and digging their roots deep, they are growing or they are living off someone else. You know, I see men do this all the time with their wife. Oh, well, she prays. She prays. She does you know, she Yeah, what about you? Because there's going to come a time when you're either going to choose something higher and step up or you're going to get offended and displeased, indignant, get your feelings hurt, Thank you for your enthusiasm this morning. A lot of times it's that, you know, I've seen people in churches. I've seen churches full of people like this. That, man, they, they're mad at each other. They're, they're, they're feuding with each other in the same church. That, that's not the way to live life. You can't live your life like that. Oh, you, you, you're going to miss the best. But here's the scary part about it, okay? People, they feed off of that. You can't live your life that way. Because let me tell you what happens. Offense, once you get into it, it never wanes. It always goes the other way until you challenge it, till you deal with it, till you say, I'm not going to be this way. You've got to make up your mind. Because there is another side effect of offense, when you get your feelings hurt, when you get displeased, when all these things happen. And, it, and it's, at, it's found in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Now, let me explain it to you, okay? Under the Old Covenant, in Deuteronomy 28, verse, I'm going to talk about verse chapter 29, but in verse 28, God laid it out. He said, all right, if you live right, you do right, you do the things I command you to do, you're going to be blessed. But... If you don't, these are the curses that are going to come on you. Okay. Now, I know that's the old covenant, but, but listen to me. Okay. Because I, a lot of people think you can do whatever you want to do and everything's going to be fine. You're mistaken. No, you have to live sincere. You have to live in the light. Okay. And not get offended. So God in, 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 in chapter 29 of Deuteronomy, God was warning them in verse, in verse 18. He said, so that you may not be among you, man or woman, family or tribe, whose heart turns away today from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of the nations, that there may be among you a root bearing bitterness or wormwood. That word is offense, resentment. Same word. Okay? So you got to be careful about that. Now listen to what it says in the next verse. So it may not happen. In other words, so this won't ever happen. When you hear the words of this curse, that you bless yourself in your heart, saying, I shall have peace, even though I follow the dictates of my own heart, as though the drunkard could be included with the sober. Now, let me explain this to you, okay? When you get over into that place of offense and you're living your life on that level, 
All of a sudden, you think I can do what I want to do and God's still going to bless me. Let me give you this illustration that's that here in the... Now, I know about being sober, okay? I know about being sober, but I also know about being drunk. Now, I hadn't been drunk in 40-some-odd years, okay? But I, I had plenty of experience, okay? I know what it's like to be drunk, and I know what it's like to be sober. Now, here's the thing about being drunk. People who are drunk don't think you know they're drunk. <laughs> no, I ain't drunk. What do you mean drunk? I ain't had two beers. That's all I had. Everybody else knows they're drunk. And they think they can do what everybody else can do, but they can't. How do you know? Because I tried. My dad, you know, was an alcoholic most of his life and, and, until he got saved. And, and I'll never forget when, he, when he'd come home and he, I, it was obvious he was drunk. And he'd look you in the eye and say, I always knew, I always knew he was drunk because he'd do this eye like this. I ain't drunk. He blinked that, that left eye. I'm, I just had a couple of beers. I, I'm not drunk. And knew right away he was. But see, you think you're like everybody else. Till you get behind the wheel or you try to do something that needs some kind of dexterity and you realize, I can't do this. The point is, there are a lot of people who are Christians, now listen to me, who are living in offense. They're trapped. They're entangled in offenses, yet they still say in their heart, I am going to be blessed just like everybody else. But you're not. You're, you're not. It's impossible because you're trapped. You can't live in the fullness of what God has for your life because you've allowed yourself to be entangled, caught in the barbed wire, and you're not, you can't get out. I watch people, and I don't get upset with me. I'm not talking about you. I'm just telling you in general. I watch people that I know they're not living anywhere near a, a righteous life, the way that, that they ought to be living. They're not walking in the light. They'll come to church once a month. And you know, they got their hands up praising God like everything's okay. No, you're drunk. <laughs> they say, you're going to get offended because you're you talking to me. Well, if I am, it's because the Holy Spirit's doing it. It's not because I'm pointing my finger at you. But my point is you've got to be careful you don't get caught up and you're looking, your focus is... What's really important? Because if you don't look at what's really important, a lot of these things that have got you, your blood boiling, so to speak, or got you upset, they're not going to mean anything. Because eternity is around the corner for every one of us. And I want to choose what's important. I want to look at and choose what's valuable. I don't want to get caught up in offense in my life and get bound up. Because I'm going to tell you right now, listen, I'm, I'm finished with this, but listen, Jesus came to his own hometown and he made this statement. He said, a prophet's not without honor except in his own hometown. And it says this, it says he could do no mighty works in his own hometown except a few sick people got healed. That was it. Now, I know it sounds funny, but he couldn't do much in his own hometown. You know why? If you read on it, it was because they were offended. They were offended. They were offended at Jesus in his own hometown. And, and, and it stopped Jesus from being able to do anything in their lives. So I, I've just made up my mind. I'm not going to get caught up in a, in a bunch of the hoorah of what's going on. I voted. You voted. God bless you. If you're one you voted for, one, fine. If he didn't, you better leave it alone. You can't get mad at people that didn't vote the way you do. And I'm just using that as an example. Because we got a lot of other issues going on right now. You know, we got racial issues going on. We got all kinds of things going on. You better be careful that you don't get caught up and get to where you start getting offended because somebody is not agreeing with you. Or get caught up in that. I, I, I've heard this here recently just uh, uh, in, in regard to Preachers getting in moral failure. And people, well, I just don't know if I can believe God if they, if they didn't. They're just human. 
Are you going to take their offense? Hey, ever since I've been a Christian now, you know, 40 some odd years since 1974. Hey, I've seen, I've seen preachers fall the whole way. But that doesn't affect how I'm going to live my life. I'm going to find out what's really important and live for that. I'm not going to carry the offense of somebody who didn't do right. So listen to me today. I'm going to pray for you that you're going to be able to know what's important. What's important in life? What's, what's the most valuable? And don't get trapped in things that are going to be of no value eternally and, and, and bring offense into your life or cause you to, to be someone who offends other people. But listen, before I do, I want everyone just to bow your head real quickly. I'm going to pray for you, but I want you to listen. If you're here today and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, that's your first choice. That's, that's your first choice. You've got to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Maybe you're one of those people, you just hadn't been walking in the light. And you know you hadn't. You know, maybe you've been offended. You know, I've got to break free of that. If that's you, I'm going to tell you today, God's ready to totally, totally transform your life. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life or you're here today and you've, you know you've been away from God, you hadn't been doing what you need to do, but you won't, I'm not going to ask you to come to the front or anything. I'm going to ask you as an act of your faith to say, Pastor, that's me. Just lift your hand say, that's me. Pray for me. And you can put it back down. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you over here. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Now just put your hands down. And listen to me. We're going to just pray a simple prayer together. I'm going to ask everybody to pray. And then Lindsay's going to come and tell you how you can take another step forward if you want. But here's what I want everyone just to pray this prayer with me, if you would. Just say this with me. Say, Father, thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you that he died for my sins, that I might live right before you. I choose Jesus as my Lord, as my Savior. Thank you that you forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness that I might live the life you want me to live. And Father, I pray that we choose right now that which is right, that which is important, that which is valuable in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for connecting with us today on the podcast. And you know, we'd love to connect with you in person at one of our campuses in Shreveport, Louisiana, or in Lake Charles, Louisiana. You can get all the information from our website, lifeunited.church.